What's up everyone, it's Avtech coming at you today with a $1,400 gaming PC assembly and installation guide. So let me break down the component selection very briefly. Of course, we have the LJ1151 Skylake i7-6700K. We have the gaming M5 motherboard from MSI, and we have two eight gigabyte sticks from Corsair of Vengeance LED random access memory, 3200 megahertz RAM. So those three components will set you back $610. Then we have a solid state drive, 960 gigabyte from PNY, they'll set you back 220. We have the Cooler Master Hyperdu 12 Legendary Air Cooler, they'll set you back around $30. Then we have an optical drive, which you don't necessarily have to have, they'll set you back around 20 bucks. We have the power supply, will set you back around $40. Didn't go the highest end with this one, just a bronze certification. And last but not least, the Corsair Spec 2 will set you back $60. So all the components, excluding the graphics card, come out to around $980. So say if you went with sort of high end, a GTX 1070 for around $420, the whole build will be $1,400. So that's just the hardware for the PC build. If you want to add the operating system and want it in the most convenient fashion, just ordering it, say, off Amazon on a USB drive already for you, that's $120. So the whole build will be closer to $1,500, including the operating system. And if you want to include, say, an $80 keyboard mouse combo and, say, a $380 4K or 1440p monitor, then you're looking at around $1,950. But just the PC build, $1,400, pretty exciting stuff. Well, the purpose of this video is not to talk about the parts. The purpose is to show you the assembly and installation. Okay, so starting off, I wanna put the thumb screws that come with the Hyper 212 Evo cooler. So the installation for whatever cooler you go with will obviously vary. In this video, we have the Hyper 212 Evo, a very budget friendly and effective cooler. And we wanna go ahead and put the back plate on before we put the processor in. It doesn't necessarily matter too much, but that seems to be a little bit more of an intuitive order to go in. So we're gonna start off by placing these thumb screws, put one or two of them, just to get the back plate installation started. I'm gonna lift the motherboard up. I'm gonna grab the back plate. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the nuts that come included with the Hyper 12 Evo and go ahead and tighten them by hand a bit just to get this back plate started. So that one's pretty secure. So let me go ahead and do the top one. Again, just screwing these on by hand. You can tighten them with a tool that they provided you with after you get them started by hand. So let me go ahead and put the third and it's gonna stick through, through the back again. And I'm gonna repeat the same process and screw the nut on just with my hand and I will tighten them the four nuts with the provided tool to tighten them. We're gonna go ahead and unbox the i7-6700K. The processor comes in a bit of plastic. Gonna set, set it aside while you open up socket LGA-1151. So there's gonna be 1,151 pins that will be exposed in the socket as soon as you push down and away on the retention lever and scoot the retention lever all the way to the back and it'll lift up the plastic covering on the socket. Now you want to pull out the processor that has again 1151 landings that will go inside the socket and you want to you don't want to touch the pins you want to grab it from the side so you can see all the landings there. And there is an arrow on the bottom left. And it's better to not touch the heat spreader on the top. You don't want any oil or grease from your fingers, possibly affecting the effectiveness of the thermal compound that we're gonna use. So on the processor, there's a little arrow indicating which direction it should go in the socket. It's on the bottom left there. And it coordinates with a circle on the motherboard. So you want to line those up and you just want to set it in the socket, this is because it's actually kind of delicate. My shaky hands there. So it's set in there. And now we want to go, go ahead and secure it into place into the socket. So by doing that, we're going to lower the retention arm. 
And you can see there's a wedge there in the socket covering that will go underneath that screw to keep it very securely into place. And as you lower the retention arm, the plastic will pop off by itself. So apply a little bit of pressure to do so. And as soon as it lashes up underneath, the plastic covering on top will come off. And you see there we have the heat spreader to the processor exposed and we are going to apply thermal paste and install our cooler. And as I was saying, if you went with the OEM stock cooler, you have the four mounting holes that you will line the towers up to the stock cooler. And I'll provide a video of that for you now over my voice. And you will press down on the four towers and they will just click into place. And the installation is actually that simple with the stock cooler if you went with the non-K series as the thermal compound is already pre-applied on that cooler. But for an aftermarket cooler going with the K-series processor, that is not the case. So we have with us today the Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste will set you back around $5 or $10. And the Hyper 212 Evo actually comes with thermal paste that you can use as well. So opening up the thermal paste, the lid just screws right off. You want to apply around a pea size because actually when you apply the cooler, it'll actually spread it around. So you probably need less than you think you would need. So that actually should be more than enough. And we're gonna go ahead and put the cooler on. So you wanna place the mounting bracket inside of the cooler and there's a little pin that you can see there and there's a little indention in the mounting bracket that'll hold it into place. So everything will be nice and level. So be sure to position it in that orientation. So we're gonna go ahead and align it visually. I believe these arms are in the middle position. And we're gonna go ahead and place it down onto the heat spreader of the processor. So once, that, once you place that down, you can go ahead and tighten the screws in a crisscross pattern. I think around five rotations per screw to not put too much uneven pressure. Back around to the bottom left. And you'll, you'll see the, the resistance will give out when they bottom out. So you'll know that they are very securely tightened at that point. I've hit this point on this one, so I'm gonna hit that point on the last screw that I have left on the bottom left. hit that point. So now that the cooler is installed, that might actually be one of the more difficult parts. We're gonna go ahead and put the fan on and you want to have it in an orientation so that the fan connector and wire is in the most efficient path to the CPU fan header that you can see on the motherboard right there, those four pins. And it's actually labeled CPU fan one for you guys. So the fan just clicks right into place. And if you have a zip tie, that might be ideal to get even less clutter with this wire. If you don't have one handy, that's okay. Let's just keep going. So now we're going to install our random access memory. So we have two eight gigabyte sticks of that Vengeance LED from Corsair. So you can just handle this on the aluminum heat spreader. Just hold it from the edges. The only part that's sensitive to electrostatic discharge would be the fingers on the base of the RAM. So speaking of that, we want to install it into DIMMs two and four is what this particular motherboard says to get that dual channel RAM. So we wanna start with DIMM two being that we only have two sticks, although this could house four sticks if you wanted. So channel A would be DIMMs one and two, channel B would be DIMMs three and four. So we're gonna use channel A and channel B to get that dual channel. And there is a wedge within the fingers of the RAM. And you wanna line that wedge up with the indention in the memory module slots on the motherboard. Also, there's little retention arms that you saw that I undid. You wanna undo them. You can just move forward or move back on them. So undo them so that you can slide your RAM right in and line it up as I was saying. And if you push down, 
On one side, it'll click. On the other side, it'll click as well. So now, line up the fingers on the bottom of the RAM with the memory module slot on the motherboard. This is DIMM4. Goes right in. Press down, top clicks, and the bottom retention arm will click as well as you apply more pressure on the end of the RAM stick. Done. So the RAM looks really cool, has enough space for the fan as well. Although the fan would get in the way, something to consider if you had the fan on this side and not this side of the cooler, you would need a kind of a low profile RAM if you wanted to go with four sticks of that DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, being that the heat spreader does come up a little bit. Okay guys, well now for the fun part, we're gonna go ahead and install the motherboard into our Corsair, into our Corsair Spec 2 case. So we're gonna rearrange where I'm sitting because we want to set the case down on the side so we can do that and if the case sides are on you're going to want to remove those so placing the case sort of on its back side if you will before i forget i want to go ahead and install the io shield before i install the motherboard you apply pressure and you would align the connectivity ports as it would be on your motherboard. So as you press, you'll hear it snap into place. And you will know that your IO shield is securely installed to the back of your case. So now for the fun part, you can identify the Corsair Spec 2 actually comes with nine standoffs already installed for ease for you. And those nine standoffs that you can count with your fingers will align with the nine mounting holes on your motherboard and you want to visually align them before you set your motherboard down in case there is a stray standoff that you didn't see that could potentially short your motherboard if you power it on and it's not inside one of the nine mounting holes on your motherboard so visually aligning those nine holes you want to set your motherboard down onto the nine standoffs as such And of course our Spec 2 case comes with the screws required to install this motherboard. So you wanna screw these screws into the nine standoffs through the mounting holes. So we're gonna start here with the bottom left. And I'm using a little bit, uh, I'm using a mini precision screwdriver just because my hands sort of get in the way sometimes. And I found this to be a little bit easier than the Phillips head screwdriver, although you could use either one. I just have found this to be a little bit easier working in a little bit of tighter spaces. Let's put number two in, and you can go in whatever order you like. Okay, I'm gonna put number three in here. Now for number four, up here right under the IO shield and all this connectivity. And I should add that if you wanna be extra careful, you could actually magnetize uh, your screwdriver. There's a magnetized demagnetizer that I'll link to down below in the description box in case you drop the screw like I just did. Your motherboard should be fine, but that way you will be sure that you do not scratch it no matter what if the end of your screwdriver is actually magnetized. Okay, so on to number five. Gonna go ahead and screw the fifth screw into place. Now for number six. And we have seven, eight, and nine up on the top of the motherboard. Okay, so now for number eight, in the middle on the top, a little bit hard to reach to, so I'm gonna pull the fan off. Just so I can reach that last little mounting hole with more ease. 
and that little hole is right above the CPU fan header. And that's where this little small mini screwdriver kind of comes in handy up in the top here, uh, where you don't have really have a lot of room for your hands. And the last screw is gonna be put into place right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the optical drive in. So there's a little piece of plastic that just pops right off. If you would like, looks like there's two spots there, two bays, four drives. So I'm gonna go with the top one. I think that looks a little neater and it just slides right into place. And there is a locking mechanism right here. So it is very securely in place. Okay, now for the power supply. We have here a non-modular EVGA 600 watt bronze certified power supply. So I would recommend go with a modular power supply, get the gold certification, but this is a power supply that I had from a previous build. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this for this Z170 build that I got going on here. So the fan actually sucks air in and pushes, sucks cool air in hopefully and pushes it out the back of the power supply. So that ideally will be facing the downward. So we're gonna do that today. So you can secure the power supply into place with four screws through the back of the case with these, but I'm gonna do so now. So one down, three more to go. Three of four being screwed in right here. So that is in and the power connection will go right here and hopefully that power connection will go into a surge protector and there's an on and off switch on the back of the power supply. And if you went with a modular power supply, it would be much easier because you don't have such an abundance of cables. And also if you get uh, sleeve cables, they look a lot better than this ketchup and mustard that we got going on here. But this power supply will only set you back around $50. I think that's one of the bigger selling points to it. So we have here the 24 pin power connector. So we're gonna do that first to power the system. And we're gonna route that through the back. And you can see there you have 20 plus four, 24 pin, and that extra four pin snaps onto the 20 pin. We're gonna put it through the middle hole. And there's only one way to insert this. So you need to correspond this hook on the end of the 24 pin power connector to the hook on to the, connect, the 24 pin connection on your motherboard. And it'll slide right in and you'll actually hear it click. But you wanna be sure it's in, just give it a little, little pull, make sure it's not coming out and you'll know that it's in there. Okay, so now for the eight pin CPU power connection. There isn't a whole lot of slack on this cable and this particular case does not have an opening up at the top, although most cases will have a little opening up at the top so you can route it behind the motherboard. In this case, we're gonna to have to route this cable over the RAM, up over the cooler to insert it into the eight pin power connection onto the motherboard. And just like the 24 pin power connection, there is one way to do it. it should snap right into place. You heard it there, just as the 24 pin did. So what's next? Well, let's go ahead and put our SSD, our 960 gigabyte PNY solid state drive. So literally just grab your solid state drive, orient the SATA connections so they are facing the motherboard and you can just slide it into this top SSD two and a half inch drive bay. And there is room for a second one if you would like and you have those three, three and a half inch hard drive disk bays right underneath. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug a SATA power connector into the back of the solid state drive. And then I will use one of the SATA cables that came with the motherboard, SATA data cables actually that came with the motherboard for the remaining connection. 
and plug that into the SSD and repeat as needed if you have more than one solid state drive. I'm gonna route this to the back up to the front side of the motherboard. There are six SATA connections to which you can plug the SATA data cable into, which I will do so now. So there's two fans that come with this case, one 140 millimeter fan in the front, one 120 millimeter fan in the back. So we're gonna to wanna to plug the CPU fan connectors into the closest corresponding fan header onto the motherboard. So the closest that I can see on this one would be system fan three. And we're gonna go ahead and insert that now. And we have the 120 millimeter in the back and I'm gonna look for the closest system fan header. And that would be either system fan one. Okay, so now for the front panel connections, you see here we have five different connectors with the power SW, reset SW, power LED plus, power LED negative, and the hard disk drive LED. And you see there a plus and minus sign what positive to be facing to the left. And you're gonna insert it where it says JFP1 down on the bottom. Go ahead and insert that there. And right above that, we're gonna put the power LEDs that you see labeled want positive to be on the outside. Again, right above the hard disk drive LED connections. Okay, so up next is going to be the reset SW. That's the reset button. So there's no positive or negative on these. There's gonna be on the bottom row, right next to the hard drive disk LEDs. And you'll insert like so. And last but not least, we have the power SW, which goes directly above the reset switch. So grab the HD audio connector. One pin is actually blocked, so you know which way to insert this HD audio connector. And it's actually very conveniently labeled for you down in the bottom left just like such. At this time, you'll also want to insert the front USB 3.0 connector into the connection on the front of your motherboard. Also, this connector is keyed, so be sure to insert it in the correct direction where that pin is blocked off. That would be facing downward. Okay, so for the video card, I'm giving you guys several options. Over more on the high end, GTX 1070, you can find, I've done a review for that. We also, you could put a GTX 970 if you'd like, if you have an older video card or 2014 release laying around. Also, we have the RX 470 as an option. I'll leave a link for it down below that I've also done a review on. So the installation is actually quite simple. Let's go back over to the PC case. And what you would do, depending on which one you chose to go with. I have here the 970, so this is the lowest end, I would say, of the three options. And you just insert that into the top PCI Express slot, you see the armor there, and you wanna go ahead and pull that retention lever into the open position. And I've already done so, but on the back here, there is a shield for the PCI Express. You want to remove one of the screws, pull the shield off wherever it lines up to the PCI Express slot. So the back of the case will be open where the connections are on the back of your graphics card. So let me go ahead and insert the graphics card. Make sure to click into place and you wanna grab the screw that you removed so you can screw a screw back into place to keep that graphics card extra nice and secure. Now for the power connections, we have two six pins on the 970. The 1070 Founders Edition just has one six pin. 
The RX 470 XFX that I'll link to down below also requires a six pin. It requires two six pins. So what you're gonna do, there's only one way to do this, is insert both six pins until they click into place so that you can power up this graphics card. And also you're gonna to want to give SATA power to your optical drive if you've installed one. So I'm gonna route one of those power cables through the back of the case. And just like you have with your solid state drive, you're gonna use the SATA data cable, only one way to put it in there in the back of that optical drive. And the end of this SATA data cable actually has a 90 degree angle, which is perfect for the optical drive. So we're gonna insert that like so, and you hear it click into place. And the other end of the center data cable is going to go into the front of your motherboard, just as the solid state drives SATA cable did. So grabbing this to the back, up to the front. You know, ideally you should do this before you install your graphics card. I just happened to forget. Okay, so now that everything is connected, grab any excess wire on your non-modular power supply if that's what you went with. And I would tuck it, in this case in particular, no pun intended, underneath the two and a half inch drive, where the three and a half inch drives would be, just to clean things up a little bit so that you don't have an abundance of wire and cable showing as you slide the side, the side of the cases onto the case. So I'm gonna start with the window side, and this really shows off the expensive components, the awesome components that you have inside of your PC. It slides right in and there's a little metal finger, I should say, that sticks out back here. You want the hole on the back of the side panel to go right inside of there. And make sure everything is nice and flush as you do this. And now the final step is gonna be to put two screws on the back here. And let me turn the case around so you can see what I'm doing. And you can actually just install this with your fingers, oddly enough. But if you wanna make it a little easier on yourself, go ahead and grab that Phillips screwdriver, give it some turns, put that side panel very securely on. It's not one more screw down on the bottom here. Okay, last but not least, for the back side panel, and as I was saying, use zip ties as needed. This is not the best example. You can certainly do a much better job and an even better job if you wanna pay a little extra and go for that modular power supply. But the side panel goes on just like the front panel did. And two more screws go in the back here, securing the back side panel into place. So guys, now that all the hardware is assembled for your gaming PC, all you're gonna need now is an operating system to get this PC going. So there are several options for obtaining Windows 10. So the most convenient option, if you don't mind spending a little more than $100, would be just to order a USB drive that already has Windows 10 on it that you can order off Amazon. So I'll leave a link in the description box down below for that. Or you can just order a 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte USB drive and with a secondary PC. Download Windows 10, get a Windows 10 CD key, which you can find conveniently at kingwin.net and possibly on Reddit. So once you have Windows 10 on that USB drive, go ahead and plug a monitor into the back of your motherboard and boot up the PC by pressing the power button on the top. Make sure the switch is turned on so your power supply is on as well and everything is plugged in and proceed with the Windows 10 installation onto the 960 gigabyte SSD that we have in this case. And you are good to go, my friends. And there will be a point at which you will be asked to type in that Windows CD key and the installation should be done in around 20 to 30 minutes. Then download all the necessary drivers that you need and enjoy your gaming PC, everyone. Well, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, enjoyed seeing the assembly process because I know I've done a lot of videos talking about the best part selection or the most efficient allocation of money for your part selection, but we haven't really shown the assembly in such a fashion as I have done so today. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope this will help someone out. All right, guys, well, you know what to do. Be sure to drop this video a thumbs up. What do they need to do, kitten? Thumbs up, guys. If you liked it, comment if you have a comment. 
actually just got this kitten and have not named this little guy. It is a male and he is a baller and he loves gaming. So comment down below what you think I should name him. And also comment down below if there's anything you think I could have done better for this assembly of this gaming PC to help others. And as always guys, if you are not subscribed to my channel, Awe of Tech, be sure to subscribe. He subscribed, you should subscribe. This is John from Awe of Tech. Catch you guys in the next video. Oh. <laughs> Test.